So welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Elite Performance Golf Studios. And today we've got some more product reviews and testing, and it's gonna be the Acura FX 3.0 driver shafts. We've got the 100, the 200, and the 300 series. We're gonna be talking bend profiles. We're gonna be talking swing DNA and characteristics and who these shafts might be best suited for and why. And of course, GC quad data, as always, it's gonna be another good one. Oh dear, that was terrible. That was a really bad swing. Wow, that is literally a snap hook. Woo! That was... <laughs> oh yes, we love that. Right, so we're gonna jump straight into it. So as I said in the intro, today we're gonna to be testing the Acura FX 3.0 shafts, driver shafts. So we've got the 100, the 200, and the 300 series in this lineup of shafts. Today, we're gonna to have the 150 M4 in the 100 series, the 250 M4 in the 200 series, and the 360 M4 in the 300 series. Now, quick rundown of what that actually means. Obviously, the first number is the kind of series that the shaft's from, so the 150, one series, 50 is 50 grams, in this case, 53 grams, actually raw uncut, so probably is playing maybe smidge under 50 grams at this length. And then the M4 is the flex, so stiff. Acura, you kind of got M3 reg, M4 stiff, M5X. So now a lot of you have seen, seen my previous videos, you'll probably be saying, why are you playing a stiff with your swing speed? I just want to kind of try and keep it as fair as possible all the way through the, the range. So I've got the 150, 250, and 360 all in stiff. Obviously, the, the 300 series being the 60 is a little bit heavier. They just don't do the 350. Obviously, being that slightly heavier, slightly stiffer, kind of bend profile design for maybe that slightly more aggressive swinger trying to launch, bring launch and spin down a touch. So I'm trying to keep it as fair a test as I always do. I'm going to be hitting shots on quad as always. 10, 15 of each maybe. Just again, trying to get a good, accurate data set to show you the numbers. And then as we're going through, we're going to be discussing bend profiles, what that's kind of designed to do, what it might actually do, and then at the end we'll go through the data and see what it did do. Right, so the 100, 200, and 300 series. So the way that these shafts are designated, you can get one on the green. Strike felt good, it's a good line. Really good line. Kick right. Oh, go on, go on, go on. Tell you what, I'll tell you what. <laughs> Joe, what I did, I actually started recording this yesterday and I had to finish because I had to go home for a roast dinner. And I thought, you know what, I'll just scrap it, I'll redo it all tomorrow. And I posted the first shot I hit on Instagram, which was ridiculously good. And I said, there's no way I'm gonna hit a better shot than that tomorrow. There you go. <laughs> um, so the hole that we're doing this on is hole 16, Willow Crest, drivable par four, little bit of a dog leg left. Obviously, I'm going straight over it. I'm kind of aimed just right at the green side bunker, just trying to play a little draw off it. That's my natural shape. Um, so that's going to be a little bit of fun as well. Headwise using the Cobra LTD X, not the LS, just the X. Nine degrees turned down to eight. Again, not really relevant in this test, but just so you, you know. So yeah, the 100 series. So this is the one that's designated as the high launch, high spin shaft. Now, why is that? So when we're talking about a profile, profile is kind of where they are creating it to be stiff and soft, and that's kind of creating the playability of the shaft. So this is the softer tip profile. Actually, when compared to the others, it's softer overall, softer in the handle, softer in the mid, and softer in the tip section as well. But when compared to the others, it's closer in the kind of the handle and the butt section than it is in the tip section. It's quite a bit softer in the tip. Again, that's the bit that you're gonna see kind of really activate, kind of, and that's where that high launch, high spin profile comes from. The tip going into more lead deflection, kicking a bit more, adding uh, dynamic loft, and therefore increasing that launch and spin. Again, if you've seen a lot of my shaft tests previously, we don't always see that. But again, that doesn't necessarily mean their marketing's wrong everyone reacts differently to something they've got in their hand. For me, I might not see that happen, but for others, we might. 
and everyone reacts differently. This is why you've really got to come in, test stuff out, hit, shit, hit shots on quad, that was close, to see what it does for you. So the soft tip, 50 gram stiff, swinging at 116 that last one was. Anyone would generally think or generally say that's way too light, way too soft, it's gonna launch and spin too much for you. Now, why do I not typically see that? It's got more to do with the way I load the shaft, which is where really a lot of the time we're gonna see the bend profile come into, into play more so than launch and spin. All right, good luck following that one. I mean, yeah, that's not, not a bad shot at all, that. He says, as he hits basically the exact same shot, maybe slightly further left, but. I just need to get one of these in the bag, don't I? Although I do say that about everything. Right out the middle, so look at those numbers. 145 efficiency, bang on the money. 13 and a half launch, 2,000 backspin from that absolute centered strike. So even with that, I might be saying, actually, I might want to pop that spin up a tiny bit for me because I typically miss left. So when I get that face a bit too close to the path, the spin's going to drop considerably, therefore creating less stable ball flight. Again, that aside, it's not really launching and spinning too much for me, is it? This 50 gram stiff soft tip profile. Now, as I was saying, I don't really load the shaft aggressively. I'm not a big, strong guy. I'm not quick from the top. I'm not really affecting that shaft a lot. Therefore, I actually, with my kind of swing DNA and characteristics, I can get away with playing quite a, a different variety of shafts. Whereas if you've watched some of our earlier videos, 40, for example, he, big, strong guy, very quick tempo, really aggressive, loads it hard. If I give him this, well, he might like snap it for a start, but <laughs> he wouldn't. But it would just be far too much movement in, in the shower for him. He wouldn't be able to feel what's going on and he would just lose it all over the shop. So that's really what we're talking about when we're talking bend profiles. We're trying to match it up with your swing DNA and your swing characteristics. That felt great. I'm dead straight. Sound like me. Yeah, I mean, it, um, look at those numbers though. It's a tiny bit low on the head, so we see that spin come up, but I love that. 22, 2300 for me. Really like it. Um, but yeah, gonna get 10, 15 with this. That actually felt, felt quite good. So it definitely is a little bit too much movement in there for me, just about, but not by a, by a long way. I mean, I love the weight of it. Swing weight D3 is quite good. I don't typically play D1, D2. Swing weight around D3 is quite good. The weight of it's good. Maybe just a little bit too much, too much play in there for me. But yeah, I'm going to get 10, 15 with this. I'll show you a couple of them. Then we'll move on to the, uh, the 200 series. There we go. That's a bit better. Kick left. Good numbers again. Definitely see there's a heel strike pattern starting to emerge 100%. And actually on the dispersion map, there's been probably five or six really good ones. There's been four big turns. I just almost feel like it is throwing off my timing a little bit. Like I just feel it kicking just maybe a little bit too much. But again, for the sake of actually getting a, an accurate data set about how the shaft's performing, I'm just going to delete those ones, leaving the good ones and uh, yeah, give some good accurate data to work with at the end. Right, so this is shot 15. So this will probably be the last one because there's plenty of decent representative kind of shots in there now to work with. It's the last one. Let's see if we can get one more on the green, haven't it? One on the green for a while, <laughs> to be honest. It's not been bad, but yeah. Draw. It's very straight. Again, it was low in the head. So if we look at the strike pattern down the bottom right, it's been definitely very low in the head. Like that has been consistent. Everything's been low, maybe marginally heel side as well. 
in terms of a strike pattern. In terms of shot pattern, I mean, there's probably been four left, which would have been bad out of the 15. Everything else has been decent. Couple leaky right ones, but they're fine. A few really good ones kind of on the green, greenside bunker. So yeah, I mean, I probably wouldn't mind tightening that in a little bit, but on the whole, considering what it is, really not, not bad at all. Right, okay, so that's this set done with the 150M4. Now I'm actually gonna jump right up into the 360M4. So now jumping into the 300 series. So now from a profile perspective, I mean, Acura SN, obviously this is the low launch, low spin shaft. So the stiff tip shaft. But actually from a profile perspective, when compared to the 100 series, actually fairly similar in the butt section, a bit stiffer in the mid section, and then quite a bit stiffer as we come down into the, the tip section. So essentially it's really just firming up that midsection and, and the tip section. So again, try and decrease the amount that it's gonna kind of deflect for impact, create more stability, and therefore hopefully less dynamic loft, low launch, low spin, those kind of vibes. But as we already touched on, on the last shaft, really now we're, we're kind of talking about someone who is stronger, faster, kind of has a quicker tempo, is gonna load and affect the shaft more, need something like this, so it's gonna stay with them more, and therefore match their timing characteristics and how they deliver the, the club. So, the 360, obviously 60 gram B in the weight, it's actually 63 and a half, I think, raw. So again, but it's probably now playing 60, just under 60. Um, so 10 grams heavier than the last, so it's a one swing point difference, mainly because of the mass. The balance point's so marginally different, but it's mainly the mass in the shaft. Nine grams is about one swing weight, so seeing that pop up to D4. Right, see if I can remember how to, uh, to swing after that little, little break. <laughs> see how this one does. Oh dear, that was terrible. That was a really bad swing. Wow, that is literally a snap hook. Woo! That was... <laughs> oh yes, we love that. Right out of the hill. Definitely got a heel strike pattern going on today, I would say. We'll see if it was the, uh, the shaft, but I'm pretty sure it probably wasn't. We'll leave that one in there, because that was dreadful. <laughs> just a really bad swing. I felt my right foot come up, got very much that way and just flipped it, which is a bad habit, which I've been trying to get out of for a long time, but probably don't really practice enough. That's incredibly interesting. I mean, that's, yeah. Essentially, that's three snap hooks in a row. Pretty much. Um, yeah, base just very close to the par. Well, actually, it's only two point, well, about three degrees, which is certainly enough. It's just that heel strike that's actually uh, it's killing me a little bit, to be honest with you. Right, come on, let's see if we can get a good one. But that's what I was saying about heavier, stiffer profiles for me. They just go left. Okay, that's a little heely one. No heel, again. That's interesting. Yeah, so I mean, straight away it certainly does feel quite a lot heavier, quite a lot stiffer to me, which again, me personally, I, I don't like. I don't generally respond to that very well. You can see the first three there, well, three were basically snap hooks straight off the bat, and then one just, just slightly down the right. That's okay, it was a little bit of a low heel strike, but for that, I really had to start to feel like I was manipulating my swing to do that, which I obviously don't, don't really wanna feel like I have to do, to be completely honest with you, but we'll see what happens with a few more. Ah, again, it felt better, but it was out the middle gone left. Better, it's not a snap hook. I mean, maybe I had a pitch onto the green from there, but yeah, it wasn't, wasn't great. Face again, just, just too much close to the path. Hmm, interesting, isn't it? It's actually gone straight, which is pretty, 
Pretty incredible. Yep, yeah, good strike, nice. There we go, there's a decent one. Again, this, I've said this a few times going through tests. It's quite difficult almost to, to adjust sometimes into different shafts and stuff. And we see it in fittings, obviously. But what's really difficult to do is try and keep your swing consistent, especially in a fitting scenario when I give you something and you're not getting on well with it. I always try and say, try and keep your swing because we're trying to find something that matches how you want to swing. If it's just not vibing, it's not gelling, just get it out of your hand straight away. Like, two, three swings, like we saw there with that, I would have been like, nah, like that's just, it's just not, then, because after that, you're gonna start changing, like I have to do now, I have to start manipulating my swing, feel like I'm swinging slightly differently to get the shaft to work for me, when we just, we don't want that. We want it just to work for you how you swing it. There we go. bit more like it. Interesting, the grouping starting to come a little bit more into the middle. I mean, <laughs> it's always the way, isn't it? The shaft that you actually don't really uh, hit straight, you hit better. <laughs> yeah, I must admit, I'm struggling with this. I am. But again, that is not uncommon, I must say, for me, going something that, I don't know, just feels a little heavier and stiffer, and even though it's still just a stiff, it just... I don't know, it's not quite vibing. I actually preferred the 150M4, feel-wise anyway for me. That's just left. I mean, it is just, it is me, it's a bad swing day. 100% a bad swing day. Which is quite ironic actually, because if you watch my last video, where I did the driver forgiveness, the kind of Bomber versus fairway finder. I literally could not hit a bad drive. I couldn't hit a bad drive. This is much more representative of uh, my, my driving. I don't know what was going on that day. Could not miss. But this is, um, yeah, a bit more like me, I'd say. That could be good. That could be good. Finally got another one on the green. Like that, going decent numbers. A little bit low in the face, I want to say on that one. Yep, a little bit low in the face. <laughs> Felt like a better swing. Little bit healy still, but. Again, pretty good. Pretty good. A bit 20. 20 shots with that. I actually would say the strike pattern was probably more varied. I mean, it definitely, as you can see on the last little graphic there, still a bit heel side, so that's just my strike miss today. This hasn't necessarily changed that. If anything, I've probably struggled with this more, to be completely honest, than the 150. Again, I said I typically do struggle with something when it's a bit heavier and a bit stiffer. But I've got to pull on it a bit more and that kind of gets me a bit more that way, which then makes it go everywhere. <laughs> so, we're really interested now to dive into the 200 series. Right, so we've had a little bit of a mare. <laughs> just having a bad day. Software issues. The battery died. I, I didn't realise, I don't know when. The storage got full on the, my PC for the screen recording, so everything just stopped. So I've actually hit about five shots with the 200 series, which I'll leave in, because actually most of them were, were pretty good, to be fair. Couple I pulled, one just left of the green, just off the green, one green side bunker, and then two just right of the green side bunker. But, so I'll leave some of them in. Anyway, we're gonna have to restart this section. So, moving into the 200 series, so the 250M4. So 200 series, again, designated mid-launch, mid-spin kind of profile from Acura in this, uh, in this series. The 50 again, so we're moving back to 50 grams. So this is actually 56 gram raw weight, so three grams heavier than the 150. But actually, again, cut down, it's, it's probably just over 50 grams. So back down to that sort of weight range. 
So back down to the D3 swing weight range as well, which is great. Uh, again, M4. So the 200 series, in terms of the profile, it's actually slightly stiffer in the butt section than the other two, but in terms of the mid and tip, it's sitting right in between those two. So someone that maybe likes to feel a little bit more stability in the handle, but a little bit more kick down the bottom, could be a great profile for that person if they load it a little harder, but like to feel a little something. So it could be fantastic for them. But again, with it being right in between the one and 300 series in the mid and tip, that again is, you know, it's, it's finding that middle ground in terms of the deflection, hence the mid launch, mid spin. But again, we'll see what the numbers say. For me, I think the weight of this just feels better. It's got a little bit of kick there, which I like. Now I've had about half an hour sit down while I've waited for everything to charge. Getting the first T excuses in there already. Um, and this is my first drive back. So let's, uh, let's see, what, <laughs> see what happens. I'll tell you what, I'd take it. It was a tiny bit healy, but go on, carry the rough, carry the rough. Oh, yes, go on, go on. Look at that. Taking that any day of the week for a first drive back. So it was, again, a little bit low healy, which has definitely been a pattern there for me today. But again, you look at the numbers, kind of 12 launch, 2,000 spin. All right, got a little drop of efficiency due to the strike, but we're on the green from 320. <laughs> we're winning. We are winning. So hard on the face. Could be very good. That's gone absolutely miles. Just past pin high. I mean, that was not a particularly great strike. Centered, but slightly high. Yep, slightly high. 15 launch, 1600 backspin. So you see the launch come up and the spin come way down due to the strike. And I think I've made this test a lot harder for myself by playing this, this, this eight degree head. I think I, I really should fit myself because I don't need to be playing eight degree heads anymore. It's making my life a little bit, a little bit harder than it needs to be with that low spin. So yeah, I mean, coming back to the whole profiles, you know, Acra designing these shafts to play a specific way in terms of low launch, mid launch, high launch is not wrong. That's the marketing of how they're designing the shafts to play based on robot testing and physics about what we know about how the shaft will react throughout the swing. A softer tip would obviously kick, for, kick more, therefore delivering more dynamic loft. Again, that's not always how it plays out with us with human variance and how we react to it. So that's why we need to see what happens on here. And that's why I love to use the word kind of gel. I'm trying to find a weight, a swing weight, a bend profile that gels with you and your swing, how you load it and your timing. And that's why I, you get a lot of questions about shaft and what might be better for me. I, I don't really love those questions and I don't generally answer them because again, in theory, I would be playing the 300 series being the heavier, stiffer tip because of my speed and all those kind of things. But it's my least favorite one feel-wise. And I, I think that's such a big thing when it comes to fitting, feel. That was smoked. That has gone so far. Yeah, it's been a few really good ones with this. I'm definitely, I'm turning it over still a little more than I like. There's a few you'll be able to see in that dispersion map just down the left side. The strike you can see is definitely starting to dot around the middle a bit more. From a strike perspective, that's better. See the green dots actually starting to dot around the green a lot more. There is a few that I've turned over, but that is just me today. To be honest, I've definitely got a bit of a left miss going, but on the whole, from a feel aspect, from a strike aspect, and probably from a miss aspect. Actually, I might chuck the 100 back on and have a couple more with that. That might have been slightly better, actually, from a miss for me. That low heel strike, again, jumping back to the forgiveness video, that low heel strike, typically the good strike miss for me, because if anything, you get those kind of low fade squirters, which typically on my face is a bit more close to the path, which is my miss. It kind of actually helps that a little bit. So might not be a bad one for that, but uh, actually out of these, just from those kind of areas, this would be definitely the winner for me. Yeah, again, look at that. I mean, it's just down the line. The carry is just way up, so I'm striking it out the middle. 
really good ball speed and good launch, good spin. Yeah, I mean that strike pattern is uh, strike pattern is much much better, much tighter. Shot dispersion's better. Again, there has been a few left. So again, that's it's been some ropey swings today. I'm not going to lie, um, but I'm going to get a few more with the 200. Then we're going to look at the data. Yeah, I mean, that's a good one to end on, isn't it? That is. There's some absolutely unreal shots for this, to be fair. Ball speed's always been good. Again, look at that strike pattern. I mean, yeah. Way easier for me to feel like I can just find the middle with the shaft. The weight's good. Kind of the feel throughout the swing is good. Just good, and that, that is shaft, like that is shaft so much. Everyone's really still talked about the, the performance. Yes, performance consistency. I mean, if I was to hit any of those shafts with a fantastic swing right out the middle, would any of them give me like more ball speed or anything like that? No, like you, you wouldn't see it, but the consistency of strike and therefore the consistency of shot pattern, reducing the miss, all those kind of things, that is shaft. Right, let's look at these numbers. Right, so magic pointy stick in hand. <laughs> Time to look at this data. Now, again, that was probably a lot as we went throughout that video. It's just a really good kind of video on shaft profile, I guess, and what we're looking at when we're trying to fit you into the right shaft profile for you. So hopefully that's plenty of information in that video. So now let's just quickly touch on the data. So I always do this all over the shop and I'm not really sure why. So I've got the 150 at the top for the high launch, high spin, and then we've got the low launch, low spin, the 360, and then the mid launch, mid spin, 250. So first up, looking from a ball speed perspective, I mean, the 150 and 250 were absolutely identical. And actually, before we actually dive into this, I've deleted any really bad ones. So, which were the left ones, basically, with all of them. Anything that was just, I knew it was just a bad swing that kind of turned over way too much, I just deleted because it's not really going to represent the shaft, how it performed accurately. Um, as you could have seen through the video, talking about like, what shaft was better for me and why, I think that was very clear that the 250 was better. In terms of the strike, way tighter. The miss was <laughs> similar, I guess, but... I was just hitting better shots more consistently. When I hit a bad shot, it's just a bad swing. Like, there's nothing the club's gonna do about that, unfortunately, but that's me. Um, so yeah, delete any bad left ones. Um, so ball speed, 150 and 250, identical, 167.3. Actually, deviation slightly tighter on the 250 M4, which is great, and then a little bit lower ball speed with the 360. Again, I just struggled with that shaft. And again, it's funny, because in theory, that should be the best shaft for me in theory, but it just was the worst, like 100% the worst. Second best would have been the 150 and then 250, definitely the best. Launch, 13, 13, 12 and a half. So, yep, the lower launch spin shaft did launch the lowest by half a degree. I mean, it's not loads, is it? Like a fraction. I mean, technically speaking, from a data standpoint, Lowest, yeah, launch lowest. The mid, yeah, launch mid. And the highest, yeah, launch highest. So there you go. Accurate, but it's, it's tight, right? It's a, it's a point 0.1 difference between the 250 and 150. And again, I'm not a robot. It's going to be a lot down to me. It's why I try and delete the bad shots and leaving the good shots to represent the product. Spin. Lowest, lo lowest spinning was the 250 at 2,000. Highest spinning was the 150 at 23, and then the 360 was sitting in the middle. So the mid-launch spun the lowest, the high launch spun the highest, and then actually the low launch, low spin was kind of just, just sat in the middle. So again, 300 revs from, from top to bottom, which is, is reasonably significant to be fair, but we'll look at the club data and we'll see why, why that actually happened, uh, what, what created that dynamic. Um, from a kind of standard deviation perspective, ball speed, the 250 launch. Actually, the, the 150 was super consistent when it came to launch and then the spin as well. It's actually more consistent with the 150. 
which is, which is very, very interesting. Um, and then carry, lowest carry was the uh, 300 series, again, just because I struggled with it. Jumping up three yards into the 100 series, which again was, was slightly better. I like that a bit more. And then 300 yard carry average with the, uh, the 250. So again, actually, it's not nothing. I mean, it's a six yard average carry distance between those two shafts. No other reason than I just really struggled to time the 300. And that's it. And again, standard deviation actually was the tightest with the 100. So there you go. It could be an argument for the 100. But uh, yeah, in terms of actually launch and spin, which is... Again, how these are kind of categorized, how these are kind of marketed. You can see there's not, there's not maybe as much in it as you might think. Club data, wow, how tight is that? So efficiency, super tight. Again, a little bit more efficient with the 250 because I felt I just struck that better. Swing speed, I mean, literally identical, 116 and a half, like nothing in it at all. Dynamic loft, we saw the, the 300 and 200 series identical, and then a little bit more dynamic loft delivered with the 100. Again, there we go, we are seeing a little bit more, probably that kick delivering a little bit more of uh, dynamic loft at impact. Hence why we would have probably seen a little bit more spin, but I did strike it lower in the face, so that also would have had a, a good effect on, um, on the launch and spin, but again, that, it was consistently slightly low in the head, which if it is kicking a bit more, I'm feeling a little bit more of that kick, that could definitely be moving that strike low in the head, which is going to increase spin anyway. But again, for me, that's not necessarily a bad thing as we discussed earlier for my miss. Um, so yeah, dynamic loft, a little bit more with the 100, identical with the other two. Dynamic loft, I mean, it's one degree in that. It's, it's really not much, not really worth diving into too much of that. On this one, path, oof, angle of attack, that's, that's, that's pretty, pretty consistent. I mean, even the face angle, I mean, they're all within one degree. I mean, obviously, it was square with the, uh, the 200 and uh, apparently slightly more open on average with the other two. But again, I mean, that's super, super tight, isn't it? I mean, average strike was definitely a bit higher and a bit more central with the 250. I just struck that better, more consistently. So, yeah, I mean... There you go, I hope that was enough of a real deep dive into these shafts, what they're about, who they might be better suited for, what we're really looking for when it comes to shaft fitting in driver fittings. And yeah, sort of what you, what you can gain and see out of the numbers, the dispersion, the strike consistency, the miss consistency, all of those things is what we're looking for. So yeah, hope you enjoyed that. Please like, subscribe, comment, all of that jazz. Let me know what you want to see. We're going to keep the content coming for you guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.